All right, hello everybody. I'm super excited to talk to you all today about ways to expand your bookmobile programming. We all know that stops on the bookmobile are busy and chaotic, and, but I hope that with a bit of pre-planning and fun, we can hopefully integrate programming seamlessly into the routines of our bookmobiles. First, a bit about myself. My name is Abby Ebach. I'm a library development specialist at the North Dakota State Library. I'm an avid lover of the outdoors and snacking, as you can see in some of my pictures. Before coming to work at the State Library, I worked at the Morton Mandan Public Library as a bookmobile assistant for a year and a half. So these are some pictures of my time on the MMPL bookmobile. We participated in a parade in New Salem, one of our stops, and that's where we decorated the outside of our bookmobile to fit the red carpet theme. We had pictures of books that had been made into movies, and we taped those up all over the outside. And then when people came in, they could check out both the book and the movie and then drop them off in the town. We had drop boxes. And then the bottom middle picture there, that's National Bookmobile Day. Last year, we parked outside of the library and then encouraged the like library patrons that, that don't usually see the bookmobile around to come in, say hello, check out, see what's going on. The other two are just of me having a dang good time because I love bookmobiles and working on one was a very unique and joy-filled experience. So I know many of you have worked with bookmobiles for far longer than I did. I hope I can bring some enthusiasm and new ideas into the mix. Okay, so that's me in a nutshell. Let's talk about you or why we're here today, gay bookmobiles. It's no secret that bookmobile staff in general is stretched thin. You do everything from prepare holds for a stop, stop your collection, maintain your vehicle, market your services, and more. So wonder you have time to check your email or let's be honest, attend this webinar in the middle of the day. And then you get to your stops and I mean, I've been there, there's no time to relax. You have to set up your computer, check in all the books, reader's advisory, what's the latest one? And of course, catch up on everyone's lives. Because bookmobile patrons, interact on a more personal level than your traditional library patrons. Some days, it's a miracle you leave your stop on time. So I understand when I hear the excuses to not have bookmobile programming. We don't have the staff, our stops are too busy, or our patrons don't even want programming. The list goes on and on. But I believe that you don't know if something will be successful or a complete and total flop until you try. And I wanna encourage you to try. So thanks for taking the time out of your schedules to listen to me. Let's get going on what we came here for. There are currently somewhere in the ballpark of 650 bookmobiles operating in the United States. I think on the AVOS listserv, I saw 648, but that was like a question mark in 2015. So 650 is my number. And 11 of those bookmobiles are here in North Dakota, which is amazing. When you look at our neighboring states, Minnesota has eight, South Dakota has five, Montana has four, and Wyoming only has two. So 11 here in North Dakota is fabulous. Bookmobile service came to the United States in 1905 in Maryland, and they had a wagon that served 66 rural locations. And by 1912, they served rural areas, um, senior centers, schools, et cetera, in a motorized bookmobile. And they're still serving their communities today. So, when you think about it, how has bookmobile service changed in the past century? I mean, service, I guess, has expanded and grown, and the vehicles are larger and more energy efficient, but we know that libraries and communities are evolving. And I want you to think about the adjustments your bookmobile has made in response to the needs of your users. Has your service evolved at all from the 1905 way of thinking, or are you still doing things as they've always been done? It's been 113 years since the United States has embraced the mobile library. And now the library service is changing across the board. It's time for bookmobiles to do the same. To start the evolution of bookmobile services in your library, it's important to look at outreach services as a whole. Outreach encompasses traditional bookmobile stops where patrons come on board, get their books, um, delivery to homebound patrons, and then community programs such as having staff go to a senior center to provide a one hour program about world travel, or the history of musical instruments. School partnerships, summer lunch programs, and more are all included in outreach. As librarians are becoming more and more integrated into community growth, bookmobile engagement also needs to grow. 
Many large communities have tech mobiles dedicated to bringing technology to their users with mobile hotspots, computers, and printing services. Craft mobiles or kid mobiles can bring maker spaces around the region or exclusive story times to daycare centers and classrooms. Most of us don't have the funding to have a separate bookmobile for each and everything that we do, so we get to be an everything mobile. This means that when we drive to our stops, we can bring along makerspace kits, story times, Wi-Fi hotspots, and everything else. So today I wanna to talk to you about bringing programs to your patrons even when you don't think that you have the time to invest. It takes a little bit of creative thinking to work this in to your already jam-packed schedule. So for those of you that don't have any time to prepare for your programs, one of the most common reasons I hear this is because there's a lack of staff. Bookmobiles are often a one or two man operation, so the idea of adding any more onto your shoulders is absolutely overwhelming. However, there are plenty of programs that require almost no preparation on behalf of the bookmobile staff. Passive or stealth programs, as I like to call them, they can be stolen from library programs as well as games and props. So one of the easiest passive programs is to set up a table or easel outside of the bookmobile for kids or adults to color on. This gives kids something to do after they're done choosing their books and while their guardians browse the shelves or chat with other patrons. Coloring pages can be found online and printed on scratch paper, or you can send out a call for donations of old coloring books and coloring supplies. Often patrons or excuse me, offer patrons the chance to make birthday cards or color their own bookmobile or bookmark. This is a good way to interact um, with children and attract artists to your bookmobile. Some libraries offer a contest and let a winning bookmark design be printed and distributed at all of their stops. And this again really entices the artists and different kids to really work on their designs. Another way to keep kids and adults alike occupied during the warmer months is to bring along yard games, which I think is super fun. So Giant Jenga or Yardsy, which is essentially oversized yard dice that you can play Yahtzee with, or any giant game. I mean, you can bring Twister or a parachute or even kites for patrons to play with while they're at your stop. They can be set up immediately when you get to your stop, just set them outside, and they're easy to take down and pack away when your time is up. For the winter months, when you don't want kids playing outside, you may need to dedicate some space inside your bookmobile to passive programs. Think space on your door, wall area, or frame around the shelves. Post a weekly question on a whiteboard or a piece of paper and allow kids and adults to write their answers on scrap paper, sticky notes, or if you have a whiteboard, write on the whiteboard. Answers are fun to give and then to read back. So this may draw some attention from your regular patrons and kids look forward to answering fun questions like what color hair do aliens have? What's the first thing you do when you go to the beach? Um, purple and put on sunscreen are my answers. So another easy prep program is a grab and go craft. Uh, you can encourage kids to take a craft home with them when they come on board your bookmobile. If your library children's department is already hosting craft programs, ask for leftover supplies. Create a grab bag that includes all of the supplies with instructions how to make the craft and maybe a picture of the finished project. If you want to come up with your own craft ideas, look no further than Pinterest or whatever you can think of. When in doubt, you can let the kids decide what they'll make by just tossing in random craft supplies, like a mini paper plate, paper, glue dots, googly eyes, and pipe cleaners. Kids will look forward to a new craft every time they come on board. But if you're lucky enough to tie a craft into pre-existing children's program, the prep time for the program will be less than 10 minutes pre-trip and absolutely nil during your stop. One way to attract new adults to your bookmobile is through a community book swap shelf. Clear out one small shelf on your bookmobile of circulated materials and put out donated books. This allows patrons to bring in books from home and swap, out, and swap those out with the ones on the shelf. In this way, your shelf is constantly updating itself. For adults with lost materials or fines on their accounts, or for those who live out of region and can't get a library card on your bookmobile, a book swap shelf may be just what they need to feel welcome on board and becoming a more inclusive place can never be a bad thing. Removing one shelf of library materials for a book swap shelf will not reduce your circulation numbers, but it will probably be, but it will keep their patrons on their toes. You never know. You may even get a few new patrons that want to donate their books to your book swap shelf. It's a win-win in my book. Last but not least is my favorite and often overlooked service for a bookmobile to have, a notary. 
Becoming a notary in North Dakota is fairly easy and the cost is nominal. Once established, you'll be able to notarize your patron's documents right on board the bookmobile. This service is very appreciated in rural areas and requires little effort on the part of the librarian. Again, it's a way to attract newcomers to the bookmobile or just provide a convenience service to your regulars. Now, for those of you that have stops that are too short or too busy to ever provide a program, I don't want to overwhelm you. If your stops keep you constantly on the move, that's a good thing. The best part of the bookmobile, though, is that it's nor or that is that it's mobile. You're not just stuck there. You aren't required to sit in one spot. So I want to encourage you to look outside of your regular schedule and your regular stops to make special appearances. This is how you make your bookmobile services more visible to your community and introduce yourself to a whole new crowd that may not even see the bookmobile on a regular basis. Become a community staple, if you will. I'm not telling you to attend every single community event, mostly because that would be insane and you would drive yourself bananas trying to coordinate that, but I'm telling you to start making appearances. Start by dedicating yourself to scheduling one special bookmobile appearance at a community event or new location every month. This might be a co-op, a touch a truck type event, setting up at a community garden or a farmer's market, driving to a local parade, or dedicating a special stop to a local summer camp. As you become more visible, organizations will start asking you to come to their events. Consider creating a special event request to have on your library website or on board for these special occasions. And I know you're probably thinking, whoa, Abby, all the, these appearances are super chaotic and I will probably never see my materials again. And to that I say, you don't actually have to circulate materials at every single stop. It's a perk, yes, but being there is what's important. Remember, you're not just a booksmobile. So consider having your bookmobile and a booth at a food truck festival, street fair, county fair, or any other fair you can think of. There are many opportunities for bookmobiles to be a part of the larger community event. You can host a story time outside of your bookmobile or have a simple craft. Consider doing a demonstration of robots, puppet shows, or anything else that will capture the interest of your audience. Even if families just look at the book bus or come and talk to you about the library services, you're introducing the bookmobile to a whole new group of patrons that don't typically see you on your route. I think it's Woody Allen that said, 80% of success is just showing up. All right, last but not least, I wanna talk about fun programs that can be held at any stop. These may attract new families and delight the regulars. The most important thing to start with though, is to ask your patrons what they want. Say things like, we plan on starting to, new prog to do programs at our regular stops. Are you interested in any of these? You know as well as I do that bookmobile patrons love to have one-on-one -on -one conversations with their librarians. So why not take this chance to gather their opinions on programming? Engaging them in the process of deciding what happens at their stop encourages them to come and participate. Let's start with our youngest patrons by taking story time on the road. Bring along a puppet or your imagination and spend 10 minutes reading a story or two. At school stops, you can encourage preschool and kindergarten classes to spend extra time on board. And at neighborhood stops, you can schedule story time for the very beginning or end of your stop. This may attract some new families to your bookmobile and get kids excited about their books. On nice days, you can have story time outdoors. And by doing this, patrons can continue to browse inside the bookmobile while the kids are being entertained outside. For older kids and teens, engage a group to explore their town through a scavenger hunt type game of guess where or guess what. This requires nothing more than a camera and a printer or social media page. Take a picture of something common near your stop from a strange angle or really close up. If you're feeling super creative this month, you can hide a miniature picture of your bookmobile around town and take pictures of it and say something like, where's the bookmobile hiding? Make sure the object or location is something unique to your community you're presenting it in. The goal is for your patrons to find out where or what this object is. If you're deciding to print out the picture, you can show it to people, then come on board and they can go searching for it over the course of your stop and come back to tell you where it is. You can have them tell you the next time you're at that location if they can't find it while you're there. If you want, you can offer a prize, but a good job is probably just as rewarding. Discovering something before all of your friends is half the fun. If you're using a social media page, post a picture a week before your stop. This gives your patrons a week to explore their neighborhood for something unique. 
they can come on board and tell you the answer or message you on Facebook. However, this might have spoilers if they leave a comment on your Facebook post, so you need to be careful. Pictures can be taken in advance if you have extra time one day. Quick go around town and take five or 10 pictures. This game is interactive and a fun way to get your regulars to learn more about their communities and look at their neighborhood in a new way. Another good way to provide programming for kids and teens alike is to create a set of pop-up kits. Many libraries work with their children's programmers to help this, this idea, and they can split the cost and share the kits. The basic idea is to create a program in a box or have a pre-planned activity with supplies all ready to go. Kits can be a variety of things, from a cat craft science experiment, um, I don't know, to just different crafts. I attached a link with a list of super comprehensive pop-up kits program with a lot of ideas. They can choose to create, um, this group, they chose to create instructional videos to set up with their kits, so staff can help inside the bookmobile and the kids can watch the videos with their parents and get the instructions that way. And the kids don't have to be set up at every single stop, um, but it is beneficial at longer downtown or neighborhood stops as an extra activity. And I also wanna take this moment to make a plug for the North Dakota State Library's new STEM kits. With funding from the Air Force STEM program and the Grand Forks Air Force Base School Liaison Office, the State Library has created a variety of kits for circulation. Kits range from a telescope to construction kits. We also have several kits with programmable robots like Spheros, Cosmos, Cubelets, Stash and Dots, Drones, Cars, and Cody Bots, the list goes on. These kits typically come with three to six of each robot. Each of our STEM kits come with resources about how to run the robots and pre-planned programs or activities. They, gradually become they are gradually being released as we get the information ready, and they can be reserved through Kit Keeper on our website. These kits would be a great way to engage students by taking them on a road, or for a quick pop-up STEM activity at a special event booth. For adult programming on the bookmobile, think of various traditional library services that can be taken on the road. For example, September is update your resume month. Consider allowing patrons to bring in their resume for you to look at and review. While this is quite time consuming, it's important to remember that bookmobiles are a library service and resume reviews, genealogy research tips, and wellness information and resources about different topics each month, these are all often found at a library and might be appreciated on the bookmobile. And last but not least are some of my all-time favorite adult programs, goods exchanges. A cookie swap around the holidays or a postcard exchange during the summer can connect patrons across counties and neighborhoods. A cookie swap can take place at one stop by having patrons bring a plate or a bag of cookies to December stop and then trade them, or if you wanna be a bit more involved, take cookies from stop A to stop B at your next stop and so on and so forth until you've completed your entire schedule. Make sure to have patrons sign up with a phone number or email address so you can remind them the day or week before to bring their cookies, because it's kind of a shame when they have them already and then forget when they come to drop off their books. If you're looking for an even simpler idea than a cookie exchange, consider a postcard exchange. The premise is that every participant buys a postcard and sends it to another participant, so everybody both receives and sends one postcard. So to facilitate this exchange, participants need to sign up by submitting their name and address. You can have one month worth of stops to, for sign up to make sure that you get everybody, and then the next month, randomize the names or have participants pull a name out of a hat to get the address of a person they'll be sending a postcard to. Each person will send their postcard to this name that they draw. And then in the perfect world, everybody also receives that postcard. This is super fun in the summer, especially if your participants are traveling and send a postcard from across, across the country or across the world. All right, I need to quick mention National Bookmobile Day, which is coming up. It's celebrated on the Wednesday of National Library Week and is a day to celebrate all things bookmobiles. What's a better way to kick off new programming than on a bookmobile holiday? Last year, several libraries hosted bagels and bookmobiles events, where the bookmobile served bagels that were donated by a local bagel shop to the first few dozen patrons that came to say hello. This garners attention for your bookmobile and has the added draw of free food. I think it sounds fabulous. So on April 11th this year, you can find a way to celebrate National Bookmobile Day your way. 
whether that means popping up around town where you aren't usually seen with fun activities, or parking in front of your library all day, and talk to your regular library patrons about the benefit of the bookmobile. This is an excellent way to broadcast your services to an entire community of people. If you're on the road on the 11th, make sure all of your stops know that it's National Bookmobile Day. Have them submit reasons the bookmobile is important to them and share this with your library board. And of course, find another time to celebrate bookmobiles during National Library Week. And so I just wanna quick wrap it up here. I wanna impress upon you the importance of providing programming with your bookmobile. Library services are changing across the board to serve their ever-changing communities. And slowly but surely, bookmobiles need to transform to fit these needs as well. By looking at your library's strategic plan, you can find ways to contribute to the goals and mission of your library. Outreach services are just as important as children, teen, and adult programming, and increasing the visibility of your bookmobile to the public serves you, your library, and your community as well. So don't be an island. Work with your counterparts inside the library to create programs that will work inside the library and on the bookmobile. All programs can have an outreach component at one of your stops. Make sure you advertise this extended activity at the original program and on your library's social media page. As you know, bookmobile patrons are loyal and vocal about their love of the bookmobile. But in order to continue your growth, you have to make the bookmobile both essential and visible to your community. As with all programs, there will be growing pains at the beginning. But I hope I've given you some ideas that you, you can make your own. Are there any questions or about some of the programs I've mentioned or cool programs that you've done? All right, well, please feel free to contact me anytime. My information is here on the screen and you'll receive a copy of this webinar and a follow-up email in the next day or so. I wish you incredible amounts of success. Thank you.